Richard Feinberg from uh, uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. That was a really excellent presentation. But I have one question on the final remarks. If it's got to be zero for the safety, isn't that almost counterproductive because you're striving for a goal you cannot get to? So what the hell, anything we did, we were trying for zero, you're always going to have errors. It's got to be perfect. That's the only fly I could find in what I thought was a brilliant presentation. Thank you for it. So you heard the question in the back? Because it's about the zero part. You're good back there? And I'll pay him later about all the nice compliments. But, but the issue, I'm with you there. And that's what I'm saying. Before I came to the board, I thought anyone who said zero is your goal, that's fantasy, that's media hype, et cetera. What I've come around to is zero at least has to be the goal you get to. So that every, you know, because the problem is anything less than that, if we only get to 80%, well, there's that 20%, we don't know if we can do that or not. And if you don't have zero as the goal and you stop short, and, and this is what I've learned, is basically people say, you know, we want to see an 80% reduction. They get there, but if they kept going, they would have had a 99% reduction or a, whatever it is. So I think it's always got to be zero is the goal, and it's got to be an endless, endless, basically. This is what, I hate the catch words, continuous improvement, et cetera, but I think that's what the zero is. You know, you're at 80, great, get to 85, get to 90, get to 92. You're at 20, get to 25. It's always got to be, you know, the zero's got to be the ultimate goal. And that part, I think, is part of the way you judge. You know, it's sort of improving. Because um, I really think if people end up saying, you know what, hit 80%, you're good. Well, what do you do about the other 20% that you could have changed? That's got to be part of the equation now, too. So I'm with you. I used to think, oh, that's just a media hype thing, et cetera. But I think that's got to be it. You've got to strive for zero. And again, zero what? Zero whatever your outcome is that you're after. Okay? All right. I think we have one in the back. And if you can say your name and where you're from, that'd be great. Uh, hi. Lois Epstein. I'm a Pipeline Safety Trust board member. I'm also from Alaska. And I don't think there are too many of us here, but uh, we like to speak. And, uh, and thank you very much for your presentation. Um, the, my question goes to one of your earlier points about the NTSB uh, saying that you do investigate all accidents. Clearly, there are a lot of pipeline accidents and some major ones that don't get investigated. There was a major spill into the Yellowstone River by Exxon, and I know some of it is uh, related to your, your resources, but maybe you can go into a little detail about uh, how those decisions are made and whether, you know, if there are accidents that we really think should be investigated, how to best make that happen. So great question, Lois, because um, what I have found interesting, so in December, it will be three years on the board, and I talked to a lot of transportation industry groups, and what's fascinating to me is how little they actually know about the NTSB, which is why I typically include at least some slides to give people a sense of what we do. So w what I actually refer to is we investigate accidents in all modes of transportation, and by statute, we have to investigate all aviation accidents and actually keep a database on that. But your question is right on target. Because the challenge we have then is, in the other modes that we're not required to investigate every one of them, how do you choose? So let me just take you somewhere else. On the roadways, 5.4 million crashes every year. How are you going to look at all those or pick those out as well? So the challenge we have is trying to pick what those are. And I would say that generally um, we do that in a couple of ways. One is we try and identify ones that have some kind of national importance. Okay? So... If you think about it, San Bruno and Enbridge had a whole bunch of national issues that we could highlight in those investigations. I'll give you an example. Many of you here probably remember, remember the Bronx bus accident that occurred, you know, in the middle of the night, the casino, and then it flipped over and basically had the post sever the top of the bus accident. 5.4 million crashes. Why that one? Well, it ends up that was a low-cost carrier um, that's curbside service. So that was really an investigation on a whole issue about the kind of curbside service that's going on. So we have certain things because of our um, expertise and modes that we're looking for certain issues. If they come up, we're going to go after them because of their national importance. I would also say if you've got something you think that's critical for us, you ought to call us. You know, I don't mind telling you, in our comm center, they got the television screens going because sometimes we're learning from the media almost as fast as people are calling us. And, and I can't guarantee we're going to rush out and be able to do it, but if you think there's something of national importance that we should have focused on, you should call us. Because, by the way, we can send out a regional investigator, we can send out a small team, or a board level. So there's a lot of different levels of investigation that can go on. All right. We're going to have to stop. There. You bet. Thanks. We're going to have to stop there, and I saw all kinds of people wanting hands to get Dr. Rose kind of...